Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unbox and Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're going to take a look at something which ultimately might be a little bit on the boring side, but potentially if you are getting more modern equipment in your home, especially for home networking, then 2.5 gigabit switches might be something that you're looking into, or have looked into in the past, looked at the prices and absolutely been sick, looking at how much it actually costs to implement 2.5 gigabit ethernet in your home. Now some people, if you're lucky enough to live in certain areas in the UK, you may be offered new broadband packages from various suppliers, including Virgin Media, which are now offering a two gigabit connection, which means if you have got the older one gig network in, unfortunately, you are gonna be limited by your switches and potentially by your devices inside your PC. Now, if you've got a relatively new motherboard and you've got 2.5 gig ethernet, then you're pretty much okay as far as the PC goes, but you're still gonna be limited by the switches. So that's why on today's video, we're gonna take a look at some extremely cost-effective devices which can improve the network performance in your home and also not cost an absolute fortune. Now I should say a massive shout out and thanks to Ugly Bob for sending over a couple of these for us to review. And also I managed to buy one myself as well. They are ridiculously cheap at the moment and certainly worth an investment for a little bit of longevity for your home network. So first of all, let's take a look at some price comparisons. So this is the existing equipment which I've been using in the home. And for the most part, it's been absolutely fine, but I am finding there's a few little gremlins in the system and it's not entirely perfect for what I need. So that is hence why we're doing this sort of semi upgrade. So one of the ones we're using, this is the one we're using actually in the studio. So this is the AZ Store Switch and Store. This is the ASW205T, a five port 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch. Currently this retails on Amazon for somewhere in the region of about £130. I think I picked it up for a little bit less than that, maybe around about £80. Prices have fluctuated somewhat, but yeah, this is one of the main components of our system. The other part actually in the other room, which is distributing the signal from our router and our Wi-Fi mesh, etc., is this one. So this is the QNAP QSW1108-8T as the 8 signifies this is an eight port 2.5 gigabit ethernet switch now this one actually is a very similar price around about 140 to 150 pounds currently at the time of recording on amazon.co.uk there are some slight quirks with this particular model which i'm not overly keen on and that is the fact that the leds are over on the far side rather than above the individual ports so you kind of have to work out which port is what number and then look over to the very tiny leds to see which one is causing problems or having a collision so with that set up, we've invested somewhere in the region of like 250 to 300 pounds on our ethernet, and it's still not exactly what I wanted. I wanted more ports in this particular room because we've essentially run out of them. And also I would have preferred a better link between the two. Now, obviously when it comes to cat five cabling or cat six, cat six E, whatever, then you are going to be somewhat limited in what you can transfer down those cables. Now with these, these are actually really cool. They have actually SFP ports. So these you can actually use up to 10 gigabit. So you can have a link cable going between the hubs using the SFP connection to get much better bandwidth rather than a single CAT5 or CAT6 cable, which is gonna be limited to either a gigabit or maybe 2.5. Sometimes they will go a little bit higher, but generally people recommend if you're going over a certain threshold, especially for bandwidth, then you wanna go for an SFP uplink. So let's take another look at the price comparison. So at the moment, at the time of recording, these were picked up from AliExpress, which generally you'll get a little bit cheaper. And also they didn't take very long to arrive, roughly around about a week to actually be delivered. So that is actually pretty good. Now looking first of all at the four port. So this is four ports, each of which is 2.5 gig ethernet. And also you have two SFP plus ports. So again, for uplinks, that sort of thing. At the moment, this is retailing for somewhere in the region of about £30 plus taxes. You will have to be VAT on this. So you're looking at around about £35 for this one. And I think this is actually a very considerable price saving if you're potentially looking at the five port that we looked at a little bit earlier, it ran about £130. So this is basically £100 less, plus it gives you a little bit more flexibility for those potentially 10 gig uplinks. Moving on to the eight port or technically nine port. So we've got eight 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports and also we still have that 10 gigabit SFP uplink port. So nine ports in total. This one, absolutely staggering value for money, including VAT. This came in around about 46 pounds, which I think again is absolutely amazing. Basically both of these, either the four port or the eight port, you're looking at an approximate hundred pound saving over the ones that you'd pick up from other brands such as QNAP, ASUS Store, etc. 
So potentially there's some massive cost savings to be had here, but what do you actually get? So it is actually a very meager affair. You get basically exactly what you need, although there is something missing, which I would have loved to have seen. And that is the fact that all of these don't have any rubberized feet on the base. They do both have wall mounting facility, so that's absolutely fine. They're also metal construction for heat dissipation. They have ventilation on the sides, which is excellent. And internally, there isn't a great deal of difference between these and the other brands that we looked at. Although these do have a slightly newer feature, whereas rather than having an individual controller for each port, these are using the new modern doublers, so you can get away with using less components inside, hence why you're getting somewhat of a cost saving. Other cost saving measures is the actual power plug. Now I've actually put on this one a sticker saying eight port because they're all the same. So I wanna try and keep them as uh, obvious as possible, which one come with which, even though they are the same. So these are 12 volt power supplies, and they're rated for around about 12 watts, which is absolutely fine for what these actually draw. And actually, let's take a quick look at the power consumption, because for some of you, if you're running home servers and home networking, these things are generally gonna be left on pretty much all the time. Let's take a look and see what the power consumption is like. So we'll start off with the eight port, and the five port is obviously gonna be very similar. So with this, just plugged into the wall, we're drawing somewhere in the region of about 2.8 watts, which tested from our wall meter. Then I plugged in a single 2.5 gigabit ethernet port and it went up to about 3.1, 3.2. So in terms of wattage, very, very low usage. Obviously the more you plug in, the more it's gonna consume. If you can add on somewhere around about half a watt per device connected, that should give you a good idea of what you're gonna be having as a total wattage throughput. Now there is some confusion because sometimes these are listed as PoE, some are listed as active PoE. The active PoE ones actually have a more substantial power supply and can actually distribute power, whereas these the standard PoE ones, not technically PoE, but they are able to transmit power through them up to around about 100 watts. So if you're looking at maybe using some sort of PoE injector, you can do that. Or if you're putting a PoE port into here, you can get some of that power back out, but essentially your mileage may be limited. I would really go for the active PoE to be absolutely sure. So taking a closer look at the front panel, so you've got your eight ports there. Also, you've got activity LEDs. So the amber one on the left-hand side is for 2.5 gigabit enabled. If it's defaulting down to gigabit or slower speeds, then you'll get the green activity light and you've got those on every single port. So if there's any potential problems, you can see it immediately. No guesswork there needed. On the end there, there's a little rubber blanking plug. This is for the SFP plus port. So this is for your uplink should you want to use it. Even if you don't want to use it, I think these are still cracking value for money. On the sides, pretty much more of the same. So a little bit of ventilation on both ends there. And on the back, you've got a simple barrel jack connector for the 12 volt supply. And also there's an additional earthing screw should you wish to use it. The four port or six port, however you want to look at it, is basically identical. So you've got the activity LEDs as we had previously, but this one, you've got the two SFP plus ports. So for uplinking to various other nodes, should you wish to. Ventilation slightly better on these, so slightly bigger holes on the ends there, and also on the same on the back, the 12 volt barrel connection, and also the earthing strap. These I feel if you are gonna be using them in order to dissipate the heat, if you're gonna wall mount them, I would mount them vertically, so that way you're gonna get cold air coming in from the bottom vent and coming out through the top, whereas if it's flat on a desk, there's no ventilation on the top, so the heat is gonna stay somewhat stagnant in there, Regardless of which way you do it, they actually do perform pretty much as you'd expect. I did some tests earlier on today. So this is copying a 60 gigabyte file from our NAS to a desktop PC. So this was just copying and pasting. And as you'd expect, you get data transfer rates up to around about 280 megabytes per second. It does fluctuate a little bit now and then. That could be down to network activity or potentially down to the NAS just trying to struggle to get that kind of data throughput but overall very impressed. And doing data the other way from my desktop PC back to the NAS, a little bit less because it does take a little bit of overhead We're actually writing to the drive, but still we're getting very good speeds around about averaging about 250 megabytes per second with a few spikes here and there up and down, but not anything to be concerned of. Taking a look inside now, the four port, six port, however you wanna look at it, and the eight stroke nine port, very similar internals. And actually, if you're looking at devices similar to this on Amazon, you're looking through, and a lot of them do look the same. And the reason for that is because they kind of are the same. So I'll put some links for these directly from AliExpress in the video description. 
And also I'll put in some links as well from others from Amazon around the world so you can see what they're all about. There's a lot of different brands all using essentially the same internals, just slightly different packaging. So don't be too concerned. You will pay a slight price premium though for the Amazon ones. So looking inside, you've got two heat sinks over the main chips there. And also you've got your doublers there. You've also got your SFP plus port, a few capacitors, not a great deal to get excited about, but it's nice to see they have got heat sinks on there. And actually there is an additional thermal pad on the bottom as well which is taking this particular chip here, which I'm not entirely sure what it is because these are glued on, but helping to dissipate some of that heat. If you do actually want to take these apart, at first it did confuse me because I was not too sure. So there's two screws on either end. And also on the bottom, there is actually a kind of quality control tag and there's actually a screw underneath there. So if you want to take them apart, the fifth screw is actually underneath that tag. But that then gives you access to all the insides should you ever need to, or if you're just interested and you wanna have a look inside, you can do. But I think overall, these are absolutely fantastic. And for the sake of the three units we've got here, these three actually cost less than the single five port QNAP switch that we've already got. So in terms of value for money, I think these are absolutely incredible and I'm very excited to get these set up and hopefully iron out some of the wrinkles in our home networking. I will also be doing a follow-up video when I get the SFP plus ports and run a link between this room and the next. Uh, that's gonna be somewhat of a DIY project. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe to see how that goes. I think that's gonna wrap this video up. Hopefully I've given you all the information you need and also some food for thought if potentially you are getting to the point where more and more of your PCs are using 2.5 gigabit ethernet or potentially you're thinking of upgrading your home internet speeds to something a little bit more stellar. You're definitely gonna be looking at some of these if you are. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then consider hitting the subscribe button and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.